говорит Москва. Есть Москва, не на дочь, не тенду. comrades it's comrade Rissieu and today I'm gonna do this video for a good friend of mine whose name is comrade Ace. Comrade Ace is from Liverpool so he's also British just like me. However a friend of his named Sam has family who originate from Albania and Sam's mother who comrade Ace has interviewed for me actually grew up living under Enver Hoxha's socialist regime. Personally I know quite a few people who have links to Eastern Europe. <laughs> Cetățeni ai capitalii României socialiste, doresc în primul rând să vă adresez dumneavoastră, participanților la această mare adunare populară, tuturor locuitorilor municipiului București, un salut călduros, revoluționar, împreună cu cele mai bune urări de succes în toate domeniile de activitate. My Romanian comrade, whose name is Stefan, who attends the same college as me, his parents grew up under Nicolau Ceausescu. My supervisor at work, his wife is from the Czech Republic, or what used to be Czechoslovakia, and she grew up under Gustav Husak. <laughs> Predstav o postavení inteligencie společnosti. Mladý chlapec tam napíše na dve, na tri stránky, čo si vyhlásený za spisovatela a od svojich 20 rokov doživotně považuje za právo, že společnost jako takého velkého, cenného člověka ho má držet. Si nevymýšlám, nechce jména uvázat faktické věci. A samozřejmě tvorivé štipendium nič nevytvoril, Nikdy nič neukázal, že vie vytvoriť. Vyradený z inej práce, stáva sa profesionálnym spisovateľom. Gathering in the Kremlin, the 20th Congress of the Soviet Communist Party springs a surprise on the world. Joseph Stalin, the man who ruled Russia for a quarter of a century, is publicly criticized for the first time. The critics include Premier Bulganin, his predecessor Melenkov and Party Secretary Khrushchev. But bear in mind, comrades, that a lot of people who I know that have links to Eastern Europe either grew up or have family members who grew up in the era of revisionism. So from the 1960s up until the late 1980s. So it wouldn't surprise me if that has kind of given them a false perception of what socialism actually is. The only countries in Eastern Europe during the era of revisionism that to me stood out as having stood true to the tenets of Marxism-Leninism were Romania. That was before Ceausescu became a bit crazy and started relying on the Western imperialist countries for funding until they stopped funding the country and led to him starting a harsh austerity program that drastically reduced the living standards of the Romanian population. Another country is the German Democratic Republic or East Germany and finally Albania. <laughs> Thank you. 
So if somebody were to ask me what I think of Enver Hoxha, I would say that I do like him. I do support what he did for Albania. He modernised a country that was stuck as a semi-feudal backwater under an Italian fascist protectorate regime until the end of the Second World War, when the Soviet Red Army, along with helping other Eastern European countries establish socialism, also helped Albania establish a socialist regime that was very anti-fascist, a lot like many of the Eastern European countries after the Second World War. A lot of people don't exactly realise this, but if it wasn't for the October Revolution and later the spreading of socialism from the USSR, Russia and Eastern Europe, along with Eastern Asia, may have never been industrialised and the world as we know it might not even exist. This is because our world has been totally shaped by the October Revolution, even here in Britain where I live, which granted feels so far away from the turmoil of a workers' revolution. The way we think and the way we live has been irreversibly shaped by the achievements that workers made in the Soviet Union, which is something that they will never tell you in your history books, is it? The fact of the matter is that from the time of the revolution in 1917 up until the death of Joseph Stalin in 1953, which was when the USSR was going from strength to strength, it was providing ordinary working class people with power they had never imagined, control over their work and a state that was actually made for them through the use of workers' councils, trade unions, factory committees, farm committees, school committees, neighbourhood committees, etc. It was achievements like these that made working people all over the world demand the rights we now have, the right to unionise, eight-hour workdays, etc. But now with the USSR gone, these rights are slowly being eroded away by the capitalists because they have no incentive to provide these things anymore. Therefore, what we are told by our ruling class are things like universal health care, the welfare fair state and so on were provided by the fact that capitalism is this wonderful system that is so fair is a lot of bollocks because these rights that were given to us are actually weak reflections of the advances that socialism delivered to the workers of the USSR, Eastern Europe and Eastern Asia. Sute kërë qytetit, presin për të guzim dhe entuziasm, dalë në tribun të sekretarit parë të Komiteti që nërë të partis, shoku të nverogja dhe udhejsive të tjerë të partis dhe të shtetit. For those who don't know, Enver Hoxha was a Marxist-Leninist and he did hold true to those tenets because he greatly supported Joseph Stalin and the socialist system of the Soviet Union. And in the 1950s, there was a split between the Soviet Union and Albania, just like there was a split between the USSR and China during this period. This is because when Nikita Khrushchev came to power, he had led the Communist Party of the Soviet Union away from Marxism-Leninism towards a false interpretation of Leninism and eventually his successor managed to restore capitalism within the country. So the Soviet-Albanian split really did play out just like the Sino-Soviet split as it happened due to a direct result of the Soviet Union becoming revisionist after the death of Stalin. In fact, the Soviet Union becoming revisionist caused a huge split within the international communist movement, a split which can still be seen today. This was because the Khrushchevites denounced Stalin as being an opportunist who didn't carry out the ideas of Lenin when 
In actual fact, he did. Stalin had constructed socialism in the USSR. By this, I mean that he collectivized the country's agriculture, industrialized the country, put the means of production in the hands of the workers, and increased the culture of the people during the era of socialist construction to unprecedented levels. He managed to do all of this, despite the sabotage by the Kulaks, despite the sabotage by Trotsky, Zinoviev, Radek, Bukharin and Rykov, the NKVD even, and also the invasion of the USSR by Nazi Germany. On top of this, Stalin also spread socialism from the Soviet Union to Eastern Europe, China and North Korea. My task is really not to talk about Khrushchev. My talk is to talk about Khrushchevite revisionism and its contribution to splitting the international communist movement and to uh, eventually the destruction of the Soviet Union as well as the people's democracies in, in Eastern and, Eastern and Cent Central Europe. And this attempt to split the international communist movement whether desired by Khrushchev or not, because he, he, he was under, undoubtedly, while a very clever intriguer and a manipulator, a fool as well, he might have thought that he only had to raise, wave the baton and all the parties in the international communist movement will obey him. That did not happen. Majority of them did and caused considerable harm as a result of it. But uh, he split the international communist movement and he set the Soviet Union well and truly on the downhill path whereby it, if, 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 if that path was not reversed, it could only lead to the collapse of the Soviet Union and collapse of, collapse, collapse of socialism. Although the Soviet Union did become revisionist by around the 1960s, the results of this, which were obviously the restoration of the capitalist mode of production in the country, were far more prominent under the leadership of Gorbachev during the late 1980s because of events like Perestroika. Gorbachev inherited a country in need of reform. Living standards were falling and the economy was failing. Almost immediately, he broke with tradition and took to the streets to talk to his people. Anyway, comrades, I'm going to be reading out the interview since Sam's mother is pretty camera shy and Comrade Ace's recording equipment is broken. So I've had a special request to do this. In this interview, Sam's mother will be giving us an insight of what life was like for her under Enver Hoxha's regime. So this video will really be focusing on culture and life in general. Question number one. What were the elections like under Hoxha? Sam's mother has answered, and I quote directly, You voted for a representative in work. They would go to the capital. Question number two. What was the culture like? Things like music, theatre, and books, and so on. Sam's mother has answered, and I quote directly, There was a theatre near my first home. My father loved it. The music was fun. My mother would constantly sing at my father's workplace. At night, she would sing Lul Lul for me. I hope I've pronounced that right, because I don't speak Albanian. Question number three. How was religion? treated and Sam's mother has answered and I quote directly I don't know you didn't really openly practice people were religious you just didn't really talk about it you all just practiced in peace question number four what was Albania like after the fall of socialism and Sam's mother has answered and I quote directly the government became corrupt they sold us out most of the economy became a scam after Hoxha died and the capitalists took power everything became harder question number five was Albania freer then or now and Sam's mother has answered and and I quote directly, under Hoxha, you had a house, a job, food, freedom to choose when you work. So yes, Hoxha did purge some people, but only a few politicians were affected. We were freer when we had jobs, money, and free housing. And question number six, do you have anything else to say? And Sam's mother has answered, and I quote directly, no, I just hope people can be happy again soon. So anyway, comrades, I hope you found this video interesting. I sure did. When Comrade A sent me the questions that he asked to Sam's mother, I found it quite interesting to read, to be honest. Let me know in the comments what do you think